I'm not going to be here long tonight. Will you pray for me? Amen. I want to just um, spade uh, some ground in a very familiar text. I found myself here uh, this past Sunday morning, and there's still some enamorment between myself and this text. And when I say that, I am supposing that the Lord has not exhausted it with me just yet. And so I want us to just um, look in verse 68 of John chapter 6. Thank John chapter 6. I'm in this, the C clause, it reads, to whom shall we go? May the Lord add a blessing to the reading of his word. For we who are the hearers and by faith the doers on today, you may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Eh? No need in doing a, you know, a um, whole lot of long breathing. Um, that's not my style. I just... feel like you can read the Bible at home. Let's read that phrase again. To whom shall we go? It says there's nobody here but who? Just us that are here. That we could read it as many times as we want. That's my little saying. So I'd like to read it a third time, but this time I'd like all of us to read it aloud and in unison. Those, those, um, Five words. What do they say? Dear saints, to whom shall we go? I want to just use tonight um, for a, a, a few moments this message title. I may be tweaking it just a bit. But no alternative. No alternative. Fascinating. Uh, passage of scripture here um, in terms of its context and in terms of its underpinnings in the Holy Writ. I've always been fascinated by it. I've been in love with it because I think that what it imports and what it imparts are things that are helpful to the children of God as they endeavor to to walk with him. I think they're apropos in the midst of this uh, victory conference whose thrust I have every reason to believe is to point God's children down the pathway of victory. I don't know what all has transpired this week with various preachers and teachers and prophets who have come and ministered uh, day and night. But I'm sure uh, somewhere in your pastor and bishop's mind, I haven't really spoke to him closely about this conference and what the goal of it is. But I suspect the, the thrust of it, the name of it, is to equip God's people to live better lives. better life is a victorious life. And a victorious life is a life that, <clears throat> that somehow, through God, has come into alignment with him and with his perfect will. There's a majesty here in, in this chapter in that there's an encounter with, with Jesus. An unusual encounter. It's a blessed encounter, but it's an unusual encounter. Um, Lord is trying to impart something, trying to, to bring about and promote a transition in mindset and in attitude. I suspect part of what he's trying to do is is also demonstrate to people that sometimes we're not where we think we are. 
Bible says, let him that thinketh he stand take heed lest he fall. It's part of life, and even when we walk with the Lord, that we have to be very careful that we're not deceived. And that somehow we don't think that we're in a place that we really are not. Deceptiveness that really wrought by Satan. If we're not careful, he we become overconfident. And sometimes we can get faith twisted with overconfidence. And sometimes our faith and our affection can, <laughs> we can have faith, but our faith can, can be focused on the wrong object and on the wrong thing. Humanism is <laughs> a threat to the body of Christ. And I'll just give you my own truncated definition of humanism. It's, it's the celebration of humanity. It's the worship of humanity. Modern minds do it. The intelligentsia of our age do it. The scientists do it. <laughs> they think they're so smart. They think they know more than God. That's why they don't believe in <laughs> the fact that there was a God back behind the created world. I'm not, I don't, I'm, I'm not here tonight to say that I'm in opposition with some components of evolution. Um, I think that would be folly to stand here. Can I take my time tonight? Be be folly to stand here and say that um, uh, those dinosaur bones came from somewhere. You know, we have to be careful sometimes as believers, the arguments that we make. Uh, they, those bones are real bones. Um, prehistoric beings are real prehistoric beings. And prehistoric only means uh, uh, that these are entities that were here before history was recorded. I don't read the Bible and think that I know everything. Some people do. <laughs> I know the word, but I don't know everything. And sometimes we think we have to have an answer to everything and, and we refute everything and sometimes we end up making ourselves look ignorant. And we blunt our witness instead of helping our witness. And I think the Bible makes room for all those things. I don't know how they fall together and how they fall into place. I suspect uh, Genesis 1 and 1 and 1 and 2, the old father uh, taught us something in the beginning. God created the heavens and the earth. And verse 2 picks up and says the earth was what? Void. Without form, darkness was upon the face of the deep. Some speculate uh, maybe somewhere between verse 1 and 2. That's where the dinosaurs, we're not going to talk about them. Don't get worried. <laughs> I'm just making a point. That's where they came in. He created the heavens and the earth. And there are many who, who just postulate that when he created the heavens and the earth, uh, that God doesn't make anything that's half made. So something perhaps happened between verse 1 and verse 2. They call it the gate. And they say something got in there and, and messed things up. Some speculate that that was when, when the Lord uh, kicks Lucifer and his entourage out of heaven. Because <laughs> he got lifted up. And he thought that perhaps he was God. And uh, God said long ago, and I'm paraphrasing, there's no room in this universe but for one God. Matter of fact, he said, if there's another one, I don't know him. I haven't been introduced to him. <laughs> so 
so maybe that's that's what that's all about. But the real point I'm trying to make is, uh, 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 sometimes we try to give a lot of explanation that we don't know much about. We don't have to explain the dinosaurs. All we all we got to do is say God made them. The Bible says without Him, I wish I was in the right church. Was not anything made that was made. Can I get a witness in there? Somebody, you, I haven't had you bother your neighbor tonight. Somebody need to remind your neighbor, and God made you. That's the real point I'm trying to get at. Because sometimes we forget who made us. It is the Lord who hath made us. And not we ourselves. <laughs> not just talking about your, your biological making. Most of us are humble enough to at least give credence to the fact that there's a God who brought about my physiological composition. We, we, we understand it was our mother and father that came together, but it was God who gave the spark of life. It was God who gendered life inside the womb. You know that's got to be a God? How in the world, how in the world can... Can something the size of a tadpole start out as a little, little bitty cell, then multiply inside of the darkness of a womb, just stayed there for nine months, buried and <laughs> in the darkness of a mother's womb, sealed up inside of a sack filled with amniotic fluid and it don't even drown. <laughs> Glory be to God. It has to be a God back behind that. Tell your, neighbor, tell your neighbor, if it had not been for God, you would have drowned before you were ever born. <laughs> Got to be a God. So we most of us acknowledge that, that he's back behind our, our physical making, the miracle of our birthing into the world. But, 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 but I want to I want to remind somebody tonight. I'm not, I'm not so much talking about your biological making. You, you you give God credit for that. But but I want you to know everything you are now. God made you that. Because sometimes we forget. We get caught up in that spirit of pride, that spirit of humanism. Because we succeed and excel at a few things in life. We're not careful. We take the credit. God bless Bishop Dockery. We take the credit. We pat ourselves on the back. Get a few nickels we can rub together. Oh, I wish I could talk to y'all like my mama talked. Get a few clothes on our back. Get a roof over our head. Some of us get lifted up because we get a little edumacation. A couple of letters behind our name. You can't talk to us. Our whole methodology of praise. God bless you, Bishop. Let's praise God for Bishop Dockery tonight. God, our whole methodology of praise changes. You ever, you ever met some folk, uh, uh, they get a little degree and they, and they start talking different? Used to be yo, and now, well, bless the Lord, how are you, child of God? <laughs> Pride goeth before destruction. Hearty spirit before a fall. God, never let me forget what you've done for me. We used to sing that song, Jesus, I'll never forget. to keep in my mind that, that it is from him that, that all blessings flow. I want him to keep it in front of me. Huh? That, that, that he is my provider. He is my sustainer. He is my keeper. Can I get a witness in here? 
I believe Paul knew what he was talking about when he said, in him we live. We. And have what? God had to remind, y'all told me I could take my time tonight. God had to remind Nebuchadnezzar of who he was. The Nebuchadnezzar, you remember God? He was a vessel in the hands of God to chastise Israel. God raised him up for that purpose. And God told him why I'm raising you up. And matter of fact, and he said, he said, uh, Nebuchadnezzar, and may I paraphrase, uh, if, if you just do right, I'll bless you while I got you up. But if you get lifted up, he said, I'm going to have to bring you down. People forget after a while. Whew, I wish I was talking to somebody tonight. Doesn't take us long to, to forget we get big after we get blessed. I wish I could talk to us tonight. We get puffed up after we, we get blessed. We get in position. We forget how we got in position. But then we step all over the other little folk. Can I get a witness tonight? <laughs> Nebuchadnezzar got lifted up in pride. He, he did well as long as he, he put God first. As long as he gave God glory. Matter of fact, tell your neighbor, you'll stay blessed if you give God the glory all the time. You want to know how to keep your stuff, keep God out in front. He did well. He excelled in life. He, he went to the pinnacle of life. Uh, Babylon was the, was the greatest city of that time, greatest empire of that time, known all over the world. <laughs> but one day he went out and started looking around at his stuff. I feel like taking my time. <laughs> Stepped out on his balcony, <laughs> looked out over the vastness of, of his empire, <laughs> let people get in his ear. Start puffing him up. Built the, let him build that image of himself. Set it out in the plain of Dura. And I hear uh, these words come out of his mouth. <laughs> Is not this mighty Babylon. Now those weren't the words that got him in trouble because Babylon was mighty. But he said, "Is not this mighty Babylon that I have built. Except the Lord keep the city. I thought I was in a word church. Watchmen waketh in vain. If God don't build the house, the house will not stand. So I need somebody real quick. It may sound random, but tell your neighbor, I need God in everything that goes down in my life. If God's not in it, it won't stand. If God's not in it, it won't abide. I need God in it. I need him in my house. I need him in my family. I need him in my church. I need him in my finance. I need him in my, I need God. Come on, sir. He stood up and said this. I've done this. I've wrought this with my, my own hand. Look at how great I am. Oh boy, I'm getting in trouble. You know, can I just say this to you? Sometimes we want to be appreciated too much. I'm talking to all of us in the house. I'm talking to preachers and saints. What? Tell somebody, watch your spirit. We'll get upset if people don't appreciate us like we feel entitled to be appreciated. If only you understood that God was back behind everything you did. You didn't do it. God did it through you. And what we really ought to be, we ought to be deflectors of personal glory. I used to wonder why the old saints, is that false modesty? You know, when somebody would compliment you and they would say, pray for me, is that false modesty? No, no, no. That's somebody acknowledging I couldn't do it without God. 
And I don't want you to praise me. I want you to praise God. Nebuchadnezzar got lifted up in pride and said, is not this mighty Babylon? And he talks about the fact that he wrought it with his own hand. And you know what happened. God backed up off of him. He said, if you want the glory, I'm going to let you be on your own. You want to be praised? You want to be lifted up? He said, I'm going to back up and, and, and let me see how you work it. But he says, while I back up, he said, I'm going to thump you upside the head. Now, you all know what happened. His sense left him. God changed the, the metabolic composition of his body. Nails grew out like bird claws. Am I in a Bible church? God put him down on all fours. Sent him out into the field and let him eat grass like a beast of the field. Y'all, don't let God have to take you down to get you to give him the glory. Don't let him have to strip you in order for you to acknowledge that he's the one that dresses me. When he got his sense back, he came back with these words. He said, now I know. Oh, y'all ain't gonna talk to me. How many know that God deserves the glory? God deserves the, the worst. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. I don't know about y'all. I need him. But I didn't have him. If you didn't have him, you, you wouldn't be able to keep yourself together right now. I wish I could talk to somebody tonight. How many know your car belonged to God? If you know that, tell somebody, God gave me my car. Tell him, and I praise him for it. Matter of fact, some of y'all, you're driving a hoopity, but tell him God gave me that hoopity. Some of y'all don't have a better cop because you've been ungrateful about the hoopity. God put the clothes on my back. God put the shoes on my feet. If I didn't have God, I'd lose my mind. How many praise God for your sanity? Didn't always understand. You may be seated. I, I didn't always understand, but I understand it better now. The old saints, they used to praise God. They said, uh, uh, clothed and in my right mind. I thank God for a right mind. I, I could be locked up in an asylum and, and all of us ought to be crazy after two and a half years of COVID. If God didn't help you, you may be seated for a moment. If he didn't help you. Have you ever thought about the fact, what if God withdrew his presence from you? Trying to help somebody tonight. Just think about it. What if, what if he withdrew his presence in this moment and in this instance? Do you, do you know what would happen to you right now? Do you, if God backed up from you right now, your body would become as rigid as a board. It would slide off that seat and fall down on that floor. God is keeping you with the ability to sit upright in that chair. We don't praise him enough. We don't thank him enough. We don't glorify him enough. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. I see all of that. I, I, I know I walked in a lot of different directions, but I see all of that somehow. In this text, this is a text about 
about the centrality of God, the centrality of Christ in our life. This is a text that uh, reminds us that, uh, uh, that we need him every scintilla of every second. This is a text that, that reminds us that, that, that he is the focal point of our life. Jesus, you're the center of my joy. <laughs> All that's good and perfect comes from you. you. You're the what? Hope of my salvation. Joy for all of Jesus. You're the center of my joy. He's here in this chapter. His, his ministry now has gained momentum. Can I have about seven more minutes? P picked up some, some traction. He's, he's tucking along now. Glory be to God. He's picked up disciples. <laughs> he started his ministry. You have to read other other gospels that 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 augment this story. John, he 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 doesn't go in all the machinations and details that Matthew and Mark and Luke go in. They give us a lot of biographical information. They tell us how he acquired his disciples. He just walked by and called them and said, "Follow me. I'll make you fishers of men." There was some dedication those men had to have had. I don't, I don't know if we even stopped to think about it sometime. Can you see Peter and his brother out there fishing and, and, and a man just walked by and say, follow me? Sometimes we don't, we don't, we don't stop to think about it. And, and they just dropped what they was doing. <laughs> follow after Jesus. I've I, I wondered. I, I, I've read that sometime. I wish I could preach to y'all. I, you know, I, I read that sometime. It, it just blew my mind, Bishop Smith. I, what did his voice sound like? Ah. That would just, just cause men to just stop what they was doing. What, what, what was it about him when, when he came down the dusty banks of that muddy Jordan River? <laughs> and his cousin John, they hadn't got, they had met up, as far as we know, uh, in 33 and a half plus years. As far as we know, that, that I don't know if they ever met <laughs> before they met, before they were born. Some of y'all will get that on the way home. Y'all yeah, remember you, 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 Elizabeth yeah. met up with Mary? Yeah. Elizabeth was a few months earlier pregnant. Mary was freshly pregnant and Elizabeth and Mary encountered one another and John went to dancing in his mother's womb. I don't want to mess with that because if I mess with that I would tell somebody praise is in my DNA. I don't want to mess with nobody. I don't want to mess with nobody but but, but, but you ought to look at it, neighbor, and throw your hands up and tell him, I can't help but praise him. I tell him, I got what John got. I can't. But what was it about that persona? You may be seated. What was it about the persona of Christ that could impact a man, oh, Jesus, before he was ever born? Old songwriter said he called me long. I just feel like talking a minute. Yeah. Called me long before I heard. Before my sinful soul was stirred. But, but when I took him at his word, forgiven, he lifted me. I'll leave that alone. You figure that out, see. <laughs> but I, I want y'all to know he called you before you knew he called you. What was it about him? No, when I rush through this text. What was it about him? We don't know that John ever encountered him again. John's just doing what he was called to do. He's out in the wilderness, running his wilderness church, preaching tough, oh ye generation of vipers who warned you to flee. From the wrath that is yet to come. He, he just preaching. He, he just preaching. One that's coming after me, he's going to baptize you with the Holy Ghost and fire. I don't.
don't know. Do you have proof in the scripture that they ever met again? That they ever encountered each other personally again? I don't know that they did, but, but I see John standing there in the river baptizing folk. And I see a silhouette walking down the dusty banks of the muddy Jordan River. I don't know necessarily that John immediately looked up and saw him. I want to think that John felt something come over his spirit and said, I don't know where this came from, but, but I felt it somewhere. And he didn't know the last time he felt it was in the subterranean darkness of his mother's womb. That same feeling came back and the spirit of prophecy jumped up in him and he looked down the riverbanks and said, Behold the Lamb of God. Take him away the sins of the world. What was it? You can be seated. What was it? I need seven minutes. What was it about this? Just ask somebody, what was it about this Jesus? What? Did you ask your neighbor that? Say, what was it about this Jesus? People feel him without seeing him. <laughs> what was it about it? What was it about it? There was something something about his persona maybe it was what this John uh, said about him not John his cousin now not John the Baptist but the, the John uh, this book bears his name the John that wrote those other three epistles the John that wrote uh, the book of Revelation and and, 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 and and maybe that's why John, this John is telling that singular story I told the saints in Detroit this on Sunday morning that uh, this John he, he had a, 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 a certain chemistry with Jesus that uh, looked like the other disciples didn't have. It wasn't that he was better than them. He just had a, a, a different assignment and a different proximity because, you know, when you read about this John, y'all told me I could take my time. When you read, you read about this John, this John, um, 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 uh, when you look at those uh, depictions of, of the Last Supper, the, uh, the, you know, all those pictures, you know, they, they're all sitting around the table. But, but if you look at them real close, there's one disciple that's closer than the other disciples. They're all at the table. Thank God for the table. But there was one that was right up on him. He had his head resting in the bosom of Jesus. I, somebody ought to tell somebody that'd be me in that picture, y'all. <laughs> Anybody going to be close to him may as well be me. Anybody going to have proximity to him may as well be me. But, but he was so close to him until, until he described himself and nobody refuted it. He's the disciple whom Jesus loveth. Oh, I wish I had somebody bold enough to look your neighbor in the eye and say, I can't help it, but he loves me. I can't help it. Now, who really feels that way? You said it because I asked you to say it. But how many feel? He loves me. I know. There was something about that relationship, that, that kinetic connection that put John, I think, in a, in a special place. And then I'm going to come to a close. And, and, and that's why his book has a different cadence, a different uh, 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 structure to it. Uh, uh, his approach uh, in, in bringing us uh, the revelation of the gospel story is it's different from those other three synoptic gospel writers. They, they, they tell a story, but John presents an experience. I feel like preaching tonight. And John, John, John said, I'm not messing with, with, with the evangelists. I'm not messing with the evangelist Mark. I'm not messing with the evangelist Luke. I'm not messing. I'm not messing with, 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 with the evangelist Matthew. I respect 
their assignment. I respect everything they wrote. And they're writing everything that they were told to write that, that comes out of the, the earthly history of Jesus. John, John said, but don't get mad at me. I had proximity to him. And I don't just have history to share. I have an experience to share. And so I can't just give you a list of earthly names. I got to step beyond the earth and say in the beginning was God. I wish I was in an apostolic church. And the word was God. It was with God and it was God. I, I, I ain't got time to talk about Adam. I ain't got time to run you down through Seth. I don't have time to, to, to string you along into the Abrahamic line and into the house of David. He said, he said all I can tell you is what I felt when my head was in his bosom. Forgive me if I don't call Adam's name. Forgive me if I don't call the patriarch's name. All I can tell you was that the word was made flesh. And it dwelt among us. We beheld his glory. Is of the only begotten I feel like talking of the father full of grace and truth. And, and just so you don't get it twisted, he was in the world. Somebody finish it. Tell your neighbor the rest of the verse. The world was made by him. And the world knew him not. But you ought to come back and tell your neighbor. But I know him. I. Getting ready to close. Getting ready to close, I believe. That change, you all may be seated. I'm getting ready to close. I, that changed his approach. That changed his understanding. And so that's why, you know, the book has a different cadence, different approach. We, we get some of the stories that the others got, but a different approach, different story. And you get in this chapter and, and you end up uh, prior to a, a, a discourse that's very important. And he, he feeds, uh, you know, 5,000 men, not counting the, the women and the children. You know that story. It took a little boy lunch and and uh, the, 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 the disciples wanted to send the people away but he wouldn't send them away he just he, he, he said what, 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 what's in the crowd and they said all we got is this little boy's lunch and he said bring it to me I, I'm so glad I can bring my little bit to Jesus and bring, <laughs> bring it to me bring it to me the Lord just told me to tell somebody that that tonight, you, whatever it is you're struggling with, bring it to Jesus. Whatever you brought to church, that, that's your burden tonight. Whatever you came to church with, that's your lack tonight. Lord just told me to tell you, he said, bring it to me. Put it in my hands. And you know the story. He took it and he blessed it and he break it and took it and he blessed it and he break it. Some of y'all know that because you've been surviving on broken pieces. You, you've, you've been making, I, I feel like talking to somebody. Who, 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 who's that witness that, that know what I'm, I'm, I'm talking about? Tell your neighbor, I've been surviving on the broken pieces. I can't tell you what, what other folk can tell you. I know there are other folk that can brag, amen, about their riches and how they're, 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 they're overflowing. But, but some of us tonight, Amen. You're rich, but you've been rich day by day. God's been providing your need. I feel like talking. Wish somebody would lean over and tell the neighbor, he's always been enough for me. I, I, I'm not the richest person in Lemoore. I'm not the richest person in Stockton. I don't know where all these brothers is from, but uh, you may not be the richest person from whatever city you came from. My name is Lambert Gates. It's not Bill Gates, but I can tell everybody he's always been there for me. Look like he, he just break me off enough for every day. <laughs> and I thank him for that day. He breaks some more tomorrow. I praise him tomorrow. He break off some more the next day. But my God shall supply all my needs according to his riches and 
in glory. I'm getting ready to close. I gotta move on. I'm, I'm having flashbacks of how how he was he's been there for me. I keep keep thinking about how over and over. Somebody just help me testify. Look at your neighbor and say, I can't explain it. Tell him I don't even deserve it, but but over and over, he keep on blessing me. Keep on every day. Every day. I wish I had somebody. You got to help me preach. Every day. Tell him every day he keeps on blessing me. Blesses me in the morning and blesses me in the evening. Blesses my going out. Blesses my coming in. Blesses me on my good days and my bad days become blessed days. Gets in to the calamitous nightmares of my life. Somehow works them out for me. And that's what happens in this text. It demonstrates his majesty, his glory, and his power. But then there comes a time when he says, I want to test you. I want to find out who's for real. You may be seated. I want to find out who, who's sincere, who's really connected. Sometimes, sometimes uh, there are folk that follow Jesus, but they follow him for the wrong reason. Hang out for the wrong reason. Stay connected for the wrong reason. He, he, he had fed them and, and they were hanging on. They were clamoring on. And he could read right through them. He said, I'm going to find out who's for real. The Lord just told me to tell somebody, whatever you're going through tonight is just a test. The Lord said, I want to find out if you're for real. And so, so he began to break down to them the gospel story told them that, that that it's more than about stuff. Can I get a witness in here? We've, we've drifted, the church has drifted down a pathway where we celebrate stuff and things and houses and land and money and we made the gospel about all of that but, but the Lord said no, 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 it, it's about more than that. Yeah. Kingdom of heaven is more than meat and drink. Yeah. Doesn't the Bible say that? It's righteousness, peace and what else? Joy in the Holy Ghost. Every now and then God says, I'm going to test you and, and see if you love me when, when stuff ain't happening for you. He broke it up. He broke it down to them. Broke it down and, 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 and said, I am the bread of life. Can I get a witness in here? Except a man eat my flesh, drink my blood. Say so he don't have any life in him. Breaking it down to them. He was telling them, uh, 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 serving me uh, is going to require something. This, this, this wasn't a communion scripture. This was a scripture about identification. This was a scripture about whether or not uh, you're willing to go with me all the way. Whether you'll go with me in the good times and in the bad times. He said, he said I want to know, can, can you endure discipline? Can you endure hard doctrine? Can you endure real teaching? Hello, somebody. I want to know how committed you are, except you eat my flesh, except you drink my blood. You don't have any life in me, except you bear this cross. You know, you know he did say, not only will I supply your need, he also said, if any man come unto me, he must deny himself. Y'all going to get quiet now. Daily and do what? Take up your cross and follow after me. Somebody wrote a song and said, Must Jesus bear the cross alone and all the world go free? He answered back and said, No, there's a cross for everyone. There's a cross for you and for me. Look at somebody and say, neighbor, you got to pick up your cross. Turn to the other side. Tell them the same thing. Get your preacher voice on and say, neighbor, if you're going to follow Jesus, you're going to have to take up your cross. We used to sing a song when I was growing up. When I was a little kid in the church, they... They used to sing a song. I don't know all the words, but 
But they were trying to inspire the young people. And I forget who wrote the song, but somebody among us wrote the song. And they said, take up your cross, oh, youth of God. This is your finest hour. Your finest hour isn't when everything's going well. Your finest hour isn't when the sun is shining. Your finest hour isn't necessarily when you're in the best health. But the Lord said every now and then, I got to find out if you really love me. Can I get a witness in here? The Bible says they stood around. Thank God and they heard what Jesus said. He said, except you eat my flesh. Can I have about three more minutes? Except you drink my blood. He said, you don't have any life in you. Can I get a witness in the house? Read on down a few more verses. And the Bible spells out clearly. It says, from that time forward, many went back and walked no more with him. I come to tell somebody tonight, you can't serve the Lord if it's all about the crowd. Can I get a witness in here? I wish I had somebody that would lean over and tell your neighbor, say, hey, neighbor, if you don't want to go, I'll go on by myself. Can I get a witness in here? Some can't go on if their friends don't go on. Some can't go on if their family don't go on. But I remember the old mothers back in the day. They used to sing an old church song. It was a call and response song. And they say, I'll journey on. And the other saints would shout back and say, I'll journey on. They said, if my mother don't go, I'll journey on. If my father don't go, I'll journey on. If my sister don't go, if my brother don't go, if my children don't go, I'll journey on. I wish I had somebody in the house tonight that would look your neighbor in the eye and say, hey, neighbor, I'm one of those journey on saints. I wish I had somebody that said it. Huh? Did you tell your neighbor that for real? Huh? Look over and tell somebody else, I'll journey on. Huh? Tell them I'll journey on. Huh? Jesus huh? said that said that from that time forward, huh? many went back huh? and wouldn't walk no more with him. Huh? And all that were left, huh? thank God, were the 12 disciples. Huh? And one of them was a devil. Huh? Can I get a witness in the house? But I saw him turn and look at the 12 and said, will you go also? Can I get a witness in here? But it was Peter that spoke up with a loud voice and said, Lord, to whom shall we go? Thou hast the word of eternal life. I wish I had me a praying church tonight. I got the clothes, but I heard an old songwriter say, where could I go? I don't have a praying church, but I believe I preach anyhow. Where could I go? Needing a refuge for my soul. Needed a friend to save me after him. Where could I go but to the Lord? I wish I had me a praying church tonight. Would you do me a favor and say, hey, neighbor, the reason I'm saved tonight is because I couldn't go nowhere else. I wish I had a praying church. Would you look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, I was sinking deep in sin, far from a 
peace for sure. Y'all ain't helping me preach. Look at your neighbor. Point to yourself and say, I was very deeply stained within, seeking to rise no more. But would you point up to heaven and say, but the master of the sea, he heard my despairing cry from the waters, from the waters, lifted me, safe am I, when nothing else could help, I wish I could preach, but nobody want to help me preach, I wish I could get one sign of the church to holler out, and tell the other side of the church, get your preacher voice, and say, when nothing else could help, when mama couldn't help me, when daddy couldn't help me, when my friends had turned their back on me, love lifted me. I got to close tonight. I got to go to my seat because I don't have a change of clothes. But I stopped by and to tell Limo, I don't know about you, but I still got a made up mind. I, I just came, what's the name of this church? I just came to tell Lily of the Valley that I'm still committed to the Lily of the Valley. I just came to tell Lily of the Valley I'm still committed to the Rose in Sharon. I just came. I just came to tell Lily of the Valley that Jesus, he still is the best thing that ever happened to me. I came to tell somebody tonight I'm still in the fight. I wish I had me a praying church. When you put up your nukes, look at somebody that'll pay you a little attention and say, hey, neighbor, I've been in the fire. I've been in the flood. I've been in the storm. Say, but I'm still, still holding on. Still ready to fight. Still got a mind that feel like going on. Yes, I've been in here long enough. I've seen them come. I've seen men go. I've seen women start out. I've seen them quit. But I've been saved long enough to know that the race isn't getting Strong. Hey, that trust in Jesus feel like going on. Close. I got the close. I got the close. But somebody help me close. Find your one last neighbor and say, Hey, neighbor. I'm not trying to be cute. <laughs> Say, hey, neighbor. <laughs> I'm not trying. <laughs> Had a choice. <laughs> a long time ago. <laughs> I didn't hear you say it. <laughs> Look at somebody. <laughs> And say, listen to me, neighbor. <laughs> I got to be honest tonight. <laughs> if my flesh had a choice, <laughs> I would have quit <laughs> a long time ago. <laughs> if my flesh brothers <laughs> had its choice, <laughs> I'd give up pastoring. <laughs> I'd quit preaching. <laughs> uh, if 
my flesh had a choice I'd walk out the church I don't like the suffering I don't like the pain but I just rolled to tell you I don't have an alternative I'm all out of options if I don't have Jesus I don't have anything I'd rather hold on to Jesus hold to his hand I wish I could preach hold to his hand God's unchanging hand I'd rather stay with him that said I'll never leave you I'll never forsake you I wish I had some witnesses do I have a witness tonight that'll put your hand on your hip if you a sister put it on your hip if you a brother put it behind your back and say hey neighbor the only reason I'm still here is because he never left me alone he's been there The Lord bless you. We used to sing a song back in the day. I'll let nothing, some of y'all don't know this, separate me. From his love. I wish I had some back in the day saints. I'll let nothing. Somebody look at your name and tell them. Separate me. From his love. I need some. I need somebody to open their mouth real wide. And look at somebody and tell them. I may have trials. I may have woes. Tell them my friends may come. I'm going to leave it alone. And they may go. But open your mouth wide and tell them I'll let nothing 
separate me. From his love, you may be seated. Oh. <laughs> I'm sorry, that's back in the day. Look at somebody and just tell him one more time. I may have triumphs. Y'all don't want to say it. I wish I could hear somebody. My friends may come and they may go. My pastor used to say it, but I let nothing separate me. Who shall separate me? You may be seated. God bless you. Take your seat if you will. You may be seated. Shall trial, shall tribulation, shall famine, nakedness, pearl, sword, an angel from heaven. Nothing. Paul said, nay, and all these things. We are more than conquerors. Your neighbor didn't get that, but say, tell him, you're more than a conqueror. Say it again. Excuse the redundancy. Say it again. Now, how in the world can I be more than a conqueror? If I'm a conqueror, how in the world in this victory conference can I be more than a conqueror? We have a victory we didn't even fight to get. Jesus paid it all. And all to him we owe. Put your hands together and celebrate the Lord. I'm through. I'm through. I hope I didn't, didn't bore you tonight. There may be someone in this room who needs to give their life to Jesus. more than a conqueror. All you got to do is believe. He does the rest. There may be someone in this room, this beautiful congregation tonight, in this beautiful church, in this beautiful conference that feels the tug of the Holy Spirit. you feeling tonight before we leave we want to give you an opportunity to come give your life to Jesus the doors of this church are open who will come tonight where the altar workers who will come who will come who will come we want you to be in on this 
want you to have a part in this. Peter was recognized. He had no alternative. Lord, I don't care how many have walked away and turned back. When I cast aside my worldly net, fishing in that sea, he said, I committed my life to you forever. All of the options for me are off the table. The reason a lot of people go back, they keep other alternatives on the table. They, there is no alternative outside of Jesus. Hello, somebody. Looking at our nation right now, grope and grapple. I'm not here to talk about political persuasion. Whatever side of the equation you're on, Republican, Democrat, Independent, let me tell you something. None of them can fix this. None of them. Not Biden, not Trump, not Cheney. Hello, not Vita Schumer. Not your governor of California who wants to be president. Only Jesus can fix this mess. How many know we need Jesus? The world is about to implode. I've never been a time in my life where I thought that I would even entertain the possibility that, that America could be engaged in another civil war. But I'm going to tell you all something. It's possible. whatever reason. That's why I, I, I get nervous when we talk about uh, uh, the American exclusivism. What's that word we use? We, we lift America up. There are other nations. Other empires. We just talked about Nebuchadnezzar in Babylon. Uh, but I hear God in Revelation. Babylon is falling! Rome fell. Hello? Napoleon had his moment and then his empire crumbled. Hitler thought he was going to install the, the Third Reich for a thousand years, but it imploded in a few years. Don't you get caught up in a nation that, that's only 200 years old and think it is forever. You better build your hopes on things eternal. And hold on to God's unchanging hand. No other option but Jesus. And I'm going to tell you what. Nations will keep rising and falling until we bow down and worship him. He is the king of kings. He is the Lord of lords. His name. so glad I'm saved. I don't know what to do. Who's glad about being saved? Let me just. So glad. I'm so glad. I'm so glad. I'm saved. I want all the workers to come and gather around this young man. If you're here. And here's what, here's what I want us to do for the next. Next 90 seconds. I want each of us, you don't have to stand. I want you to pray for this young man at the altar as the altar workers pray with him. This little man. Don't discount him. Don't discount him because he's young. Every old person was young one day. Every bishop was a little boy one day. Hello. 
stretch one hand this way. Then I want you to take your other hand. I want you to stretch it toward one of your neighbors. I want you to breathe a prayer for the next 90 seconds. One for the Holy Ghost at the altar. And the other for strength for your brother and sister. Ask God to give them stability. Come on, pray right now. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Father, we need your power tonight. This young man needs the Holy Ghost. You know how to give it to him. You know how to deal with him in the context of his age. Cover him with your blood. Keep him. Preserve him for your kingdom. You are able to fill him right now. Jesus in your name. Jesus in your name. Jesus in your name. He ba 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 Sunday. Glory. 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 He come up. Glory. He come up. 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 In your name. In your name. In your name. He ba ba ba. Open your mouth and God will feel you. Open your mouth. 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 Just talk out your mouth. Talk out your mouth. Talk out your mouth. Talk out your mouth. Let it be. Talk out your mouth. Talk out your mouth. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. He's able. He's able. He's able. Ah, oh, he's able. Yes, Lord. Yay! He ma 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 ma. Ooh. Now here's what I want you to do. Start pleading the blood over everybody around you. There's power in this room tonight. Power in this room. Oh. Start pleading the blood over everybody around me. Pray for strength. Pray for renewal. Bind the demon of fear. Bind the demon of confusion. Come on, saints. Come on, saints. Come on. Come on. Somebody came to church with a struggle. They need victory tonight. I dare you to open up your mouth. I dare you to open up your mouth. Oh! Send victory, Lord. Send victory, Lord. Send victory, Lord. Walk up and down the aisle. Walk between every pew, every row of seats. Send your glory. Send your glory. Send your glory. Oh. I wish I had a praying church. His power is here tonight. 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 Yay! Yay! His power is in Nebor. His power is in Lily of the Valley. Jesus! Jesus! Jesus, Jesus, oh, yes, yes, Lord, he come up. 
seconds. I want everybody to accelerate it. Let God give you your prayer language for the next 60 seconds. Lift that praise up a little high. Come on. Lift it up a little high. Lift it up a little high. Lift it up a little high. Let the Holy Ghost talk to you. Let him talk out of you. Let him speak through you. Open your mouth. Yes. It's Put that prayer language in the atmosphere. Put that prayer language in the atmosphere. Let that prayer language prophesy. Prophesy in the Holy Ghost. Prophesy in the Spirit. Yes! If you do it, some yokes will get broken right now. Somebody need a breakthrough. Somebody need a miracle. I feel a breakthrough. I feel a breakthrough. I feel a breakthrough. I feel a breakthrough. I feel it. I feel it. I feel it. Depression is gone. Fear is leaving the room. Snares are being broken. Horses are being bound. Yes!
before you, before you take your seat, before you take your seat, I just want you to affirm the work of the Lord. I want you to get up on your feet. You don't have to touch anybody, but get up on your feet and walk around this room. And I want you to tell seven people that the work is already done. You're here at a victory conference. Make that pronouncement. Don't stop till you get to seven. Don't stop till you get to seven. Don't stop till you get to seven. Tell them the workers, it's already done. It's already done. It's already done. Stop till you get to seven. When you get to that seventh person, you've got a shout of time. When you get to that seventh person, act like it's already done.
Before you take your seat, I know you've been talking a lot, but sometimes we need to affirm one another. So before you take your seat, I want everybody to tell somebody that the preacher told me to tell you. Because you came to church tonight, the assignment has been canceled. And no weapon formed against you.
bless the name of Jesus. those hands and give God glory right now. How many glad you came to church tonight? The Lord is here. The Lord is here.